Hi, my name is Professor Silver, and you're watching Pokemon Explained, where we focus on the narrative arcs of all our favorite characters from the Pokemon anime. In today's class, we'll break down the complete history of Ash's Squirtle, detailing all its battles, storylines, and character development. Squirtle debuted as the infamous leader of the troublemaking Squirtle Squad. The abandoned Squirtles rebelled against society by pulling mean-spirited pranks, tying up Team Rocket, kidnapping the gang, and wearing killer shades. Ash proved to Squirtle that not all humans were evil by expressing concern for Pikachu and by saving Squirtle from Team Rocket's bombs. Squirtle returned to Ash's kindness by rushing him to safety and blasting off Team Rocket. After the blast started a forest fire, the Squirtles combined their water guns to extinguish it. Their heroism so impressed Officer Jenny, she appointed them the town's firefighters. Though the rest of its squad accepted, the leader abandoned its four friends and joined Ash on his journey. Squirtle quickly grew into one of Ash's most loyal and dependable companions. By capturing Squirtle, Ash completed his first team of six, captured his original choice for starter, and got his first water type. Squirtle provided immense comic relief to Ash's adventures. Notable examples of its comedy include forming a UFO with Misty Starmie, chatting with its big bro, serving as Pikachu's steed in the Big P Pokemon race, torturing an injured Dodrio, and racing a Meryl. Beyond comedy, Squirtle also provided Ash utility support and underwater transport. In its first appearance after its capture, Squirtle defended the St. Anne and saved Ash after it sank. While fleeing the sunken St. Anne, a raging Gyarados separated Ash from Squirtle, Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Pikachu. Wondering where Ash had gone, Squirtle jokingly suggested he had been eaten by wild Pokemon. Though Bulbasaur theorized Ash had abandoned them, Squirtle refused to believe it, showing its deep trust and loyalty in Ash. Despite their difference in opinion, Bulbasaur and Squirtle formed an iconic bromance. After they reunited with Ash, Squirtle and Bulbasaur often appeared alongside one another, playing, fighting, and bonding. Though both Pokémon had ample screen time, Squirtle fought in significantly fewer battles. In the early Kanto era, Squirtle flew into combat against the Tentacool and Tentacruel army, trembled before Venus Doys, floundered against Primeape, defeated Executor for the Magician Seymour, and wrecked a weak Paris with Water Gun. Squirtle's minor battles left it ill-prepared for its gym debut against Blaine's Ninetales, who easily overpowered it, the loss highlighted a severe power gap between Squirtle and the other starters, who had already proven themselves in combat many times over. Soon after its loss, Squirtle starred in Beach Blank Out Blastoise, where it returned to its ancestral homeland and helped save a colony of its brethren from Jigglypuff. Unlike Bulbasaur and Bulbasaur's mysterious garden, Squirtle didn't battle, learn a new move, or elaborate on why it wouldn't evolve. Squirtle's time in the limelight did little to help against Jesse Zarbok and the Misty Mermaid, and for the Viridian Gym, where it was pummeled by Team Rocket's Machamp before being rescued by Pikachu. Though it struggled against Giovanni, Squirtle easily bested Raymond's Machamp using Bubble Beam in Mewtwo Strikes Back. In that same film, Squirtle also fought its clone to a standstill. While training for the Indigo League, Squirtle also lost to a giant onyx that Bruno of the Elite Four later captured. Though Ash intended Squirtle to fight in the League's first round, Kingler proved so powerful that its help was unnecessary. Squirtle fought instead in the League's second round in Fire and Ice against an unnamed trainer's Nidorino. During the battle, Squirtle withdrew into its shell, rolled like a madman, slammed Nidorino into a rock, and knocked it out with Skull Bash. Because only part of the battle was shown, it's unknown if Squirtle fought any of the trainer's other Pokémon. Squirtle's glory didn't last long, as it lost to Richie's Butterfree soon after in the League's fifth round by falling asleep. Seriously, falling asleep counted as a loss. I kid you not. I'm not going to speak any further on this topic because it's been over 20 years and I'm still a little angry. While Charizard ultimately lost Ash the battle, Squirtle was the true disappointment. It arguably ended the saga as Ash's weakest Pokémon. Fortunately, Squirtle accompanied Ash to the Orange Islands where it finally came into its own. In stark contrast to Kanto, Squirtle helped secure three of the four badges Ash needed to enter the Orange Cup. For the Coral Eye badge, Squirtle tied Sissy Cedra in a Water Gun Precision Contest. For the Sea Ruby badge, Squirtle built and raced a Toboggan. And for the Spike Shell badge, Squirtle completed an attack and battle test. Squirtle's gym success was complemented by a massive upgrade in battling ability. Its only embarrassing loss of the saga was against Snorlax, who crushed it with body slams. In the Mandarin Island mismatch, Squirtle tanked a Persian Thunderbolt and Skull Bashed it into oblivion. Though it then lost to the trainer's Tauros, it had already sustained heavy damage. 
Persian helped Warm Squirtle up for its gym battle against Rudy, Starmie, and Misty meets her match. After trading water guns, Starmie danced itself into a thunderbolt and inflicted massive damage. Squirtle withstood the onslaught and freed itself using Water Gun. Though the price of freedom was free falling off a cliff, Squirtle flew back using newly learned Hydro Pump and defeated Starmie with Skull Bash. Thereafter, Hydro Pump became Squirtle's signature attack, similar to Bulbasaur Solar Beam and Charizard Seismic Toss. With Hydro Pump in its arsenal, Squirtle finally established itself as a threat on Ash's team. In Pokemon Water War, Squirtle grew even stronger by training with the firefighting squad Team War Turtle. After it failed to extinguish a warehouse fire, Squirtle rekindled its confidence by proving itself every bit as powerful as a war turtle. It's never explained why Squirtle didn't just evolve to get stronger. Three possible reasons are its loyalty to the Squirtle Squad, immense personal pride, and potential fear that its personality would change like what happened with Charmander. The fact Squirtle never had to evolve to get stronger shows the fruit of its determination and hard work. Despite its lack of evolution, Squirtle played a major role in the Winner's Cup against Orange League champion Drake and his Onyx. Squirtle overcame Onyx's bind by bolstering its defense with Withdraw and breaking free with Hydro Pump. Once free, Squirtle knocked Onyx out with Skull Bash and returned to its Pokeball. It returned to the battlefield to face Drake's Dragonite. Dragonite knocked its Hydro Pump off balance with Water Gun and inflicted massive damage with Thunderbolt. Defying its weakness to electricity for a third time, Squirtle stood its ground and countered Dragonite's Body Slam with Bubble Beam. Though it then succumbed to Dragonite's Tail Slam, Squirtle helped set the stage for Pikachu's victory. After winning the Orange League and entering the Orange Islands Hall of Fame, Ash traveled to Johto, where Squirtle stayed in his party for about 30 episodes. The writers wrote Squirtle out of the series to make room for Totodile. Squirtle spent its time fighting Team Rocket, palling around with Bulbasaur, providing support whenever Ash needed it, and attacking protected species like Quagsire. In the Firing Squad, Squirtle reunited with the Squirtle Squad after they traveled to Johto to compete in the Fire and Rescue Grand Prix. Also competing were Team War Turtle, Ash, and a plethora of other Pokemon. Though it thrilled Squirtle to see its old squad, their low self-esteem troubled the former leader. After Ash's team lost in the first round, Squirtle resumed leadership over its squad, whipped them into shape, and coached them to victory over every other team, including the War Turtles. Upon the tournament's conclusion, Squirtle rejoined the squad in Kanto as they needed it more than Ash. Before departing, Squirtle shared a heartfelt goodbye with Ash and Bulbasaur. Off screen, Squirtle spent the rest of Johto training, firefighting, and honing its abilities. It returned in the Johto League significantly stronger. In love Pokemon style, Ash used Squirtle against Macy's Electabuzz after she beat his Fampy and Totodile. Squirtle opened by preempting Thunderbolt with Water Gun and dodging several Thunder Punches. Electabuzz retaliated by blocking Water Gun and striking with Iron Tail. Skillfully, Squirtle rallied its strength, outmaneuvered Thunderbolt and knocked out Electabuzz with Skull Bash. It then faced Macy's Quilava, who started off by using Flame Wheel to counter Water Gun. After Bubble collided with Swift and the battlefield filled with smoke, Squirtle drew on its experience fighting smoky fires to land a direct hit with Water Gun. Quilava soldiered on and knocked Squirtle on its back using Quick Attack. Right before Flame Wheel made contact, Squirtle used Hydro Pump to escape and win Ash the match. Though Squirtle didn't battle for the rest of the league, it happily reconnected with Bulbasaur and Ty went on. The headstrong friend briefly brawled with a Meganium and Azumarill owned by Ash's competitor, Jackson. After Ash lost to Harrison, Squirtle returned to the Squirtle squad and resumed its life as a firefighter. Though Squirtle sat out the entire Hoenn saga, it returned during the battle frontier alongside Charizard and Bulbasaur. Ash brought his starters together so he could reconnect with his roots and finally beat Frontier Brain Brandon. During the battle, Squirtle faced Brandon's Ninjask. After countering Aerial Ace with Rapid Spin, Squirtle was blown away by Sandstorm, disoriented with Double Team, and struck with a second Aerial Ace. Squirtle tried to fight back with Hydro Pump, but Ninjask blocked the attack and blinded Squirtle with Sand Attack. Showing its incredible ingenuity, Squirtle washed the sand off its face with a second Hydro Pump and finished the battle with Skull Bash. Squirtle then fought Brandon Solrock, who used Psy Wave to overpower Hydro Pump and Confusion to send Squirtle flying. While attempting Rapid Spin, Squirtle missed its mark and was knocked out by Solar Beam. Despite Squirtle's loss, Bulbasaur avenged its fallen brother, while Pikachu ultimately won the battle. Having helped Ash conquer the battle frontier, Squirtle retired to its squad to continue life as a firefighter. Squirtle ended its tenure on the series, having fully transformed itself from chump to champ.
It left the series holding its head held high and standing shoulder to shoulder with Bulbasaur and Charizard. It reappeared 517 episodes later in a Lola Kanto in a photo taken by the Rotom Dex. Though no explanation was given why Squirtle was at Oak's lab, I like to think it was there on one of its many visits to Bulbasaur. I would hate to think the two forever separated. Their iconic romance must continue. To recap, Squirtle won against Wild Tentacool, Wild Executor, Jesse's Arbok, Jesse's Lickitung, James's Weezing, James's Victory Bell, Cassandra's Paris, Raymond's Machamp, a League Trainer's Nidorino, Rudy's Starmie, a Trainer's Persian, Drake's Onyx, Macy's Electabuzz, Macy's Quilava, and Brandon's Ninjask. It lost to a Giant Tentacruel, Blaine's Ninetales, Bruno's Onyx, Richie's Butterfree, Ash's Snorlax, Trainer's Tauros, Drake's Dragonite, and Brandon's Solrock. Its one and only tie was against its clone. Over the course of the series, Squirtle used Withdraw, Water Gun, Tackle, Bubble, Bubble Beam, Skull Bash, Hydro Pump, and Rapid Spin. To this day, Squirtle remains one of the most marketable and popular Pokemon in the entire world. Though Ash has since caught numerous water types, Squirtle's position as his first means its return is always a possibility. It's not a question if Squirtle will return, but when. And with that, class is adjourned. I'll be back next week to cover a different character from the anime. If you have any requests, let me know. I'm open to any Pokemon. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss an episode. It's been an absolute pleasure sharing with you today, and now I'd love to hear what you think. Let me know what you thought about Ash's Squirtle, and how you think the series would have been different if Squirtle evolved instead of Charmander. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Until then, catch you later.